from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to be here with you every single Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I hope that your week has started off strong. I hope it's going well. If the week didn't start off strong, if things aren't going that great, I hope it gets better. And I hope everything works out for you no matter what, folks. You got to... You got to live on the softer side of things. You got to be nice. You got to be kind. You got to be sweet. You want to know why? Because if you're good to the world and you think the world's not being good to you, I have this crazy idea that we all have a maker that's watching over that's going to make things right eventually. And God is great. So just know that he's never not here and he's never not looking out for you. Even when you feel like he's not. That's probably one he's looking out for you most. And I want to read a quote that Becky Hammond said that I love. Katie Kalinske, who's with us every Thursday, she shared it. And awesome, awesome quotes. So I want to read that this morning. You never know what your journey has in store. You just work hard and keep your nose to the grind. You do things the right way. You treat people the right way. And good things happen. I don't know what to tell you why people are mean to you. I don't know what to tell you why people are nasty and try to ruin your reputation. I don't know what to tell you about people that seem to always have a problem with you or always want to let you know that they don't like you. I don't know what to tell you about people that just don't make sense. The only thing I know to tell you is that when the world seems bleak and the world seems crazy, that's when you have to pray the hardest and give the best that you possibly can. Because it is in this crazy world that I believe we can make a difference. It is in this crazy world that I believe we were put here for a reason. And it's in this crazy world that I believe that we, together, can create something special. So that the people that come here in the future, that live here in the future, that are raised here in the future, don't have to start a sentence off with, in this crazy world. Welcome here to Wake Up Call. Let's jump in. Here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We like to start off the show by giving you our menu of topics. The morning menu that is, live now with the morning menu is Dan Tortora. The morning menu here on Tuesday, June 5th, 2018, folks. want to let you know really quick here before we hop into the topics for the day. You know what's going on in central and upstate New York here in August on August 12th, which is a Sunday. Sunday, August 12th. It's a one-day only event. You don't want to miss out on this. One day and one day only. We are putting all of these amazing things into one place, the CNY Pop Festival there's so many awesome ways to enjoy this festival. It's it's it, The thing that I love about it that I'm so excited about is that you get to kind of choose how you want to enjoy the show. And what I mean by that is that instead of being one thing, like a one-trick pony, you know, you think about you walk into a theater, right, a movie theater, and you pick a movie. Well, instead of being a movie, where the theater you get to decide your experience. What do you want to see? Do you want to see the sports figures? We have plenty. Otis Hill, Dale Shackelford, Daylon Coleman, Eugene Waldron, Baimu Cicada, Kyle McIntosh, Rob Drummond, Dennis Duval, Howard Trish, Sonny Spira, Roosevelt Bowie Jr. You want to see TV stars and movie stars? That's fine, too. Michelle Harrison of The Flash, Mark Dodson, voice actor who's done The Gremlins, Salacious Crumb of Star Wars, and so much more. Kevin Duhaney, who is a Power Ranger and has been on Four Brothers as well as Half Baked. Jeff Braza, who is just in Molly's Game and was also a Power Ranger. 
to Blake Foster, who was in Casper Meets Wendy, Boy Meets World, a bunch of stuff growing up, as well as a Power Ranger. And if you're concerned about who's going to be protecting the event, well, that's the Ghostbusters of Central New York. So there are so many different things to do while you're there. Oh, and by the way, we have some phenomenal partners that are going to be there. Honda City of Liverpool is bringing cars on premises to help you find your next vehicle today. Utica Pizza Company is privately serving our guests in the guest lounge area and true by hilton camillus is now the place to reserve your room for the festival and you could go to cnypopfestival.com and get all of this in one area cnypopfestival.com just on the home page you see the vip and discount general admission on sale now you click on buy festival tickets to well buy festival tickets it says one day only gives you the information that it's Sunday, August 12th, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., 9 a.m. for VIP ticket holders only. So why wouldn't you want to be a VIP ticket holder so you could be there for the whole show? You can get directions. You see the 2018 CNY Pop Festival partners are Honda City of Liverpool, Utica Pizza Company, and True by Hilton Camillus. Then you see all the guests that are coming. And then outside of that, if you want to be a vendor, you click on Vendor Sign Up. Very simple. It says, would you like to be a vendor? You put the name of your company, your email address, and you send me a message. Our 2018 vendors, a bunch of them are on there, like Orange Theory Fitness of Syracuse, Aware of Vineyards, Newman Sports Cards, The Fourth Wall Comics and Collectibles, Theory Syracuse, Rashad Mustafa, who is a local CNY artist that I'm very excited about having, PJ, PGA Authentic Autographs of Central New York, Looking Glass Events, Super Powered Pop with DT and EB, and, of course, this show, Wake Up Call, with Dan Tortora. You could get more on our festival partners, the guest lounge partner, the vehicle partner, and the hotel partner. You could check all them out. And then, of course, you could see Super Powered Pop and see what we've been doing and, and who we've been talking to and whatnot. So if you want to come to an event unlike anything that has ever been done in Central and Upstate New York, we have a long history. I've never known our history to include an event that in, that had sports and TV and movie stars all in one place at one time. We are making this special for you. Our vendors are from all walks of life. We are accepting all family-friendly vendors, so you're going to get a feel for everything. It's going to be like shopping in a mall while watching panel discussions, getting autographs from your favorites, getting pictures with your favorites, getting great food, and getting to just be sub, you know, in this submersive area and enjoy it. And I'm very excited about the Ghostbusters of Central New York being there and knowing that you know, the anniversary for Ghostbusters Day is coming up here on June 8th. And the crazy thing about this is you know, for the Ghostbusters, they've been around for a long time, folks. And I'm very excited that we're going to have some Ghostbusters protecting us. It's going to be their 35th anniversary next year, so we get to have them right before that happens. And we are ecstatic about that. So thanks to the Ghostbusters of Central New York for repping a movie that I've loved my whole life. CNY Pop Festival. Don't miss out on it. The tickets are extremely inexpensive. Buy them now on cnypopfestival.com. Or you can go straight to cnypopfestival.eventbrite.com. And we've jazzed that up and added a bunch of things to that page as well to make it easier for you to see what's going on, what's happening, and why it's so good and why you should be there. So make sure that you get your tickets today. With that being said, in the morning menu on today's broadcast, I'm very excited in just a, a, a few minutes here, about 15 minutes, we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Juwan Dowles of Western Michigan. Juwan Dowles of Western Michigan is going to be joining me. Juwan Dowles played at Syracuse. Had some time here with the Orange, spent the better part of his career for football with the Syracuse Orange, and has decided to move on as a graduate to Western Michigan instead of staying here for his graduate year. So he has officially graduated from Syracuse with his bachelor's, and he could play immediately for Western Michigan, who will can, which will connect him to Tim Lester, who is the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach at Syracuse. He will now be his head coach, Jake Moreland, who is the tight ends coach at Syracuse, and he will also be connected to Tim Douse, which he's very excited about, who is the defensive 
line coach at Syracuse, and he's a defensive coordinator at Western Michigan. So very excited to see not only Juwan Dowles, who's been on the show since he was recruited to Syracuse years ago, not only excited for him and his future, but excited that his future as coaches came back to coaches that I really, truly respect and appreciate and and uh, and very much so, you know, love and care about because Schaefer's staff was filled with amazingly kind coaches who, you know, took the time to get to know you and, you know, we built some great bonds while they were here and those bonds to me I would like to think are unbreakable on my side, you know, and, and, and hopefully on theirs and, and these coaches have done a great job of keeping in touch with me. So I'm very happy with Juwan Dallas. So he's gonna tell his story of why he's leaving Syracuse, why it was the right time and why West Virginia is the West Virginia, pardon me, why Western Michigan is the right fit for him. So we will have that coming up around nine thirty AM Eastern time today. And then following at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time today, we will be joined by Rodney Williams. Rodney Williams, who is also a a, a secondary member on Syracuse's team, who has decided to also leave Syracuse and take his chances elsewhere. He's going closer to home, where he's from New Jersey, and he's going to be going to Philadelphia to play for the temple owls inside of the american athletic conference all of you that know the show know that i cover the whole aac which means that you're gonna get uh, i mean (laughs) i told him it's easy for me where he went because i've already spent a lot of time covering temple so we get to have him on the show here about 10 15 a.m eastern time and he's going to be discussing with us why he made the jump from syracuse to go elsewhere and that's all going to be coming up in a little bit. These these guys were brought in by Schaefer and Schaefer's staff, and they are now moving forward from Baber's staff and testing the waters elsewhere before trying to make a little push toward the NFL. So I'm excited for that. Juwan Dowles, who is leaving Syracuse for Western Michigan, will join me at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time and at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time. Rodney Williams, who's leaving Syracuse for Temple, will join me then and of course at the end of the show we will do what we always do on a Tuesday which is round out the show in the nicest of ways and that is by having the ingredients to success proudly brought to you by Utica Pizza Company and we will take a look at those ingredients you got to listen in to the end of the show to find out what I have chosen as a topic every week we choose a new topic and we talk about the ingredients to be successful with that topic And so that'll be coming up in just a little bit here on the broadcast to round out today's show. But with a few minutes that we have before we connect with Juwan Dowles and have that interview air here on the broadcast, I did want to get to some stuff that's been going on. And, you know, one of the things I want to talk about is the Cleveland Browns. You know, the Cleveland Browns, the fact that they are going to be on HBO's Hard Knocks. I wanted to discuss that with you and kind of get your thoughts on that a little bit, that they're going to be on Hard Knocks. It's pretty insane, pretty interesting that Hard Knocks has this. I know I discussed it a little bit, but the whole notion of Hard Knocks and just what Hard Knocks is, you know, it's, it's, it's invasive to your camp. I don't know, and this is the thing, there's positives and negatives about having hard knocks because it's, number one, invasive, like I was saying. You know, they're there, the cameras are there. If something happens, if somebody's razzed, if somebody's hazed, you know, I know that when they were with the Jets, you know, somebody was saran wrapped to, I think, the goalpost, and they threw powder on them. You know, those things can get on film, and that can create issues and whatnot there could be fights within the team that could end up getting on film and creating issues themselves so it's just kind of you know what do you want to be on film and are you comfortable with that so the invasive side of the things and the things that you can't really hide that's going to be out there the other thing that's good is the publicity the browns don't get a lot of publicity they don't not a lot of positive publicity So it's not out there a lot. They're not out there a lot. Their games aren't out there a lot because they don't win. So, you know, it's this is not a team that you're used to seeing on a day-to-day base, month-to-month base and whatnot. So it's good for for Cleveland to get some exposure. It's good for Cleveland to showcase, 
their new team and that they've made all these changes and whatnot. So that's a good thing that they'll be top of mind and people will be talking about them for better or worse. They're going to be discussed out there and, and people will have things to say about what they've seen on the show and, and, and whatnot. Obviously, I'm sure that there's some type of control, that there's some type of, hey, we're not going to air this or we're not going to air that. We can't air this play or we can't do this. So I'm sure that that comes into play somewhere inside of this thing because they are an NFL team that is trying to win games as much as people think that they're not. So, you know, that's there's there's going to be some type of, I would imagine, control of content and things that we don't see. But, again, you know, they have to roll something. They have to film something. And you know that a lot of people exist to just showing the juicy stuff and maybe not telling the whole story. So we don't know what we're going to get, but we know that it's going to be the Cleveland Browns and, and that the Cleveland Browns have the opportunity to get some exposure and to kind of show us what they're about mm-hmm. and show us what they're doing, which I find to be interesting because, like I said, you don't see them ever. And I'm interested in watching because of all the moves that they've made. You know, they've they've made a lot of moves. They've done a lot of things in the offseason. They brought in Carlos Hyde as a running back to the team from San Francisco. They brought in Jarvis Landry, wide receiver from the Miami Dolphins. So they've made a lot of these moves in hopes that they're going to get better and they're going to do some things. And I'm excited to see what that's going to transition into, what that's going to look like. They brought in Tyrod Taylor from the Buffalo Bills who had, you know, and, and the thing was, you know, the marriage with the Bills, I'm surprised the Bills kept them this past season because it just, you know, from the outside looking in, it just didn't look like a happy marriage. It didn't look like they really wanted them there. And, you know, obviously the decision to let him leave shows you that he wasn't really a plan for their future and whatnot. So I'm interested to see what's going to shape out there. I want to see Baker Mayfield and how he treats people. The thing is, when the cameras are on and the cameras are rolling, this is another negative. Are you getting the real people, or are you getting a a fabrication of who they are? Are you getting a facade of who they are? So that's another piece of this, too, is, you know, this is during your camp, and if people are playing it up for the camera or playing it down for the camera, whatever they may be doing for the camera, you know, that could affect things, too. And, you know, people could be thinking personally about their own branding and what they want to do and not thinking about the team. So ultimately, if I was a coach or a GM or whoever, would I ever want hard knocks to come? Probably not. If I was going to shoot anything, I'd shoot it myself and I'd put it out on my own social media. I'd put it out on my own website and whatnot where I can control the content because I don't know what they're going to say about me and how they're going to twist things and what they're going to do. But I want my team to focus on being a team. I want them to focus on finding a way, on winning together. And I don't think that having cameras from an outside source inside of my camp are going to make my team better. You know, you always ask, well, you should ask yourself, is this decision making me better? You know, is worrying about this person going to help me? Is having cameras at this event going to help me? You know, you always have to look at things like that. Are they going to help? You know, and that's that's how I look at the situations. Is it going to help? Is it going to improve anything? It can improve your exposure, but is it ultimately going to help you to have the cameras there? Well, we might sell a few more tickets. We might get a few more people to believe we've changed. But at the same time, what's the benefit to having cameras there? I think it's more of a detraction. I think it's more of a distraction. I think that you're going to have to deal with the fact that some people are going to want to be on camera. Other other people are not going to want to be on camera. And it just adds to it. It honestly adds to it. If I was a coach, I would say an overwhelmingly resounding no. I do not want to be on Hard Knocks. Thank you so much for inviting me, but I don't want it. Because even the publicity, I don't know what it's going to look like, and I don't know what it's going to feel like, and I don't have any control over it. I might be able to control some content of we can't show that play, or we can't show us scrimmage this thing, but they're going to want to talk to the polarizing people. They're going to want to sit down and get information, and it's television. So at the end of the day, they're trying to get viewers on HBO 
which means that they're not going to just tape a show that's about fun and exciting and everybody's happy. They don't want that. They want there to be a fight. They want there to be a discussion. They want there to be the question of why is Hugh Jackson still the coach after they went 0-16. They want drama. TV sells on that stuff. They sell on drama. You know? And we're so inundated. I mean, we are used to it. I mean, Jersey Shore, for goodness sakes, comes back, and there's like little to no drama. So what do they do? They bring back Angelina. Why? To establish some drama, to establish some problems, to get people talking and saying, why is she back and what is she doing? And, oh, my God, I got to watch. Because people are getting bored of it because they watch Jersey Shore because Jersey Shore is a train wreck. And right now these people are older and some of them are acting nicer. And, you know, it's it, it's not that people wish ill on them, but people are bored of it because they're happy and they're nice. And they want to see them fight. They want to see them argue. They want to see there be a problem. You know, and that's the thing that we have to realize that we have to kind of condition ourselves out of in society is that it's not good unless it's dramatic. It's not good unless it causes issue. It's not good unless somebody's fighting someone somewhere because that is not something that you know obviously i think that we should be connected with and that we should be thinking about so you know the hard knocks idea i'm gonna watch it as a consumer because i genuinely as a broadcaster i want to see what cleveland's doing i want to see how they're growing i want to see how they're advancing and like i said we don't know how much we're going to see and how much we're not going to see but I want to see what Cleveland is doing. I want to see how they're talking in practice. I want to see what their leadership looks like. I want to get a feel for the Cleveland Browns because we don't get to see them or feel them or understand what they're about a lot of the time. So that's what I'm looking for. But like I said, on the other end of the coin, if I'm a coach, if I'm Hugh Jackson, I would say, guys, thank you for the offer. But I can't have that here. I can't have that distraction here. I don't want my guys focusing on that. I want them focusing on me. We got to get better. We got to do it now. And this is not the time for that. And I don't think there's going to be a time for that. That's what I would say. So I ask you the question, if you had an NFL team, would you want to be videotaped? Would you want to be on hard knocks? Do you think that any publicity is good publicity? Or would you, or even in that sense, would you want your team to be out there and sacrifice the fact that some of them may not be paying full attention or they may be playing themselves up to be on camera? Because at the end of the day, it is a television show. Now, did I really sense hard knocks when they were at Jets camp? I didn't. So did I kind of forget that they were there? I can't speak on the player's behalf, but there was more cameras there than in other seasons. That's what let me know that Hard Knocks was somewhere. But it wasn't obstructive, I don't think. I didn't get a feel for them in the sense of they were annoying or they were overbearing or I felt like I was on a TV show. I didn't feel that way. So I can say from my experience that the crew didn't make me feel like, oh, my God, there's somebody here that is just overwhelmingly annoying or I can't I can't focus on practice because this guy's trying to get this shot and that shot and do this, that, and the other thing. I didn't feel that there was an obstruction. You, you didn't even really know that they were there. But at the same time, you know, it's like it's it's Rex Ryan at the time that I was covering the Jets. And, you know, Rex Ryan is he's all about saying stuff and doing stuff and getting himself out there. So, you know, I mean, it's like he's the perfect coach to have for that. He's the perfect coach to ham it up. But, you know, I would be a different coach. I have no problem being on camera, but this is my team. This is my livelihood. And I don't want any distractions. I don't feel like it was a distraction, but I, again, I wasn't a player. I'm a member of the media who is going about my job while there's cameras running around around me. It's not bothering my life, but it could have been bothering their life. So the hard knocks thing has always been a tough sell in the sense of 
as a consumer, you want to watch it, but is it really is it really something that the NFL needs to impose on a team and say, you know, because there's been years where like people nobody said yes. So then the NFL is like, well, then I'm going to, you know, it's kind of like when your teacher would ask in class, is there any volunteers? And nobody raised their hand and she said, don't make me choose. And then she goes, okay, well, it's on you now. And then she randomly selects somebody who doesn't want to do it and they have to do it. That's kind of how this feels a little bit. And I would not want to be forced into something like this. And I don't think you should be forced into something like this. I think you have every right to say, no, thank you. Please move on. And they have to move on. You know, if someone came to my house and said, I want to interview about such and such, and I don't want to be interviewed, I'm going to shut my door. So I don't know why the NFL feels the need to kind of push the term and say, well, somebody's got to do this thing because we have to do this thing. You know, I, I think that they have the right to say, no, we don't. And we don't want to and come back another time because we're not doing it this year. So, you know, there's, there's, there's two sides of looking at this thing. And like I said, am I going to watch it? Yes. Do I think that it's the best idea for an NFL team? No. So that's the two sides of the coin on this thing. We're going to take a step aside here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. When we come back, Juwan Dowles will be joining me. Juwan Dowles, cornerback of the Syracuse Orange, has graduated from Syracuse, has one more season of eligibility, and he could play immediately. He decided to leave Syracuse to go to Western Michigan to rejoin some of Syracuse's former staff and Tim Lester, Tim Doust, and Jake Moreland. So he will be heading out there. But before he does that, he's heading right here to Wake Up Call right after this fast break. Tune in, and we appreciate you being here. This is a Wake Up Call Fast Break. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or ice milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Clothing that will change with you without you having to change. DrySigLady.com, D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, Lady.com. With the bamboo line, relaxed fit clothing, as well as the athletic fit clothing, DrySigLady.com is fit for any woman, any time of the day, anywhere. Whatever you're doing, whatever your day commands of you, Command yourself to feel comfortable in Dreisig Lady Apparel. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Lady.com. For all the women out there, feel good in what you're wearing. And don't feel like you have to constantly change throughout the day. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, a business owner, going for a jog, going for a meeting, or just relaxing at home, DrySigLady.com is the right fit for you. D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G, lady.com. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. Call our home office at 315-752-9513, or better yet, call or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Let me ask you a question, Lawrence. If I needed you to help me buy a house, find the right place, could you help me do that? Joe, I'll help you find your dream home. You don't ever say my name on the radio, never. If I needed to sell a house, could you help me go about that the right way? Yes, yes I can. How do they get a hold of you? Call me directly at 315-748-2524. But you also do the commercial property. So if I got a business, couple businesses, got to take one here, move it over there, do this, do that. Are you going to help me buy and sell my commercial property also? Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. What's my name again? I have no idea. Absolutely. But they need to know your name. So give it one more time. This is Lawrence Papaleo, licensed real estate salesperson for Gilbo Realty. My phone number is 315-748-2524. Why don't you tell them your name one more time and that number so we can jot it down. This is Lawrence Papaleo. 
Call me or text me directly at 315-748-2524. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. Proud to be here with you every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And it is always an honor and a privilege to speak with the young men and women in the community, be it central and upstate New York, up and down the East Coast, the Midwest, the West Coast, and even outside of this country, it's always a privilege to have the over 1,000 voices that have been on this show. And one of those voices that's been on for a while throughout the years through his recruitment for his time at Syracuse and now in his next chapter is Juwan Dells. And Juwan is, is somebody that I've always had a lot of respect for, always appreciated having on the show. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you just want to see the people that you uh, get to know over the years just do well and succeed and and have a blessed career and when in whatever that they do. So Juwan is is a name that is no stranger to wake up call and, and now we get to talk about something new and a new chapter for him. So with that being said, let's bring him on to the show, Juwan Dells. Juwan, how you doing today? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing well. And and Juwan, you know, first and foremost, to go back to the beginning, I spoke with you when you were agreeing to come to Syracuse, getting recruited by Syracuse, and, and ultimately signing with Syracuse. Bring me back to those moments because, you know, they're, they're always fond moments for me to see that and, and have that moment where you say, this is what I'm going to do and, and this is where I'm going to, and then to follow your career after that. So bring me back to those moments. Um, definitely. Uh, it was definitely a surreal moment for me, uh, you know, coming out of high school and being able to play for – uh, uh, Syracuse University and, you know, attend and, and, and get a degree from there was, you know, it was awesome feeling from the start and, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And when you had the opportunity to look at this final season of eligibility for you and, and branch out and have a chance to play elsewhere, what ultimately made that decision for you that you felt like this was the route to go as opposed to staying at Syracuse to to essentially uh, try somewhere else and, and to give yourself some new scenery. What what made that the better choice than staying where you are? Um, definitely, you know, uh, you know, the opportunity for me at the end of the day was was, uh, was what I was looking forward to, and you know, you know, Syracuse, you know, I had a great four years there, and you know, um, had some ups and downs, of course, you know, just like anybody, and, and you know, you know, my fifth year being, you know, my last year possibly, you know, to play in college football, I just wanted to you know, put myself in the best situation possible to kind of, you know, further, you know, further my career, you know, whether it be, you know, the next level or, you know, you know, just a better chance, you know, on the college football level. And, you know, that was, you know, my biggest concern with kind of, you know, making that decision. And when we look into that decision for you, before that decision came about, I also spoke with Rodney Williams and Rodney, came in in 2014, you came in in 2014, both as defensive backs, so both there on the defensive side of the ball with Syracuse, and he was medically redshirted in 2014, you were redshirted in 2014, and and him as well as yourself have played as uh, redshirt freshmen, redshirt sophomores, and redshirt juniors for 2015, 16, and 17, respectively. What can you say about your relationship with Rodney? Um, you know, that's like my brother, man. That's, uh, you know, somebody, you know, I would go to work for and, you know, he would do the same for me. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, our time has, you know, has come and gone at Syracuse and you know, I wish him the best of luck and, you know, in, in, in his future endeavors. And, um, you know, he's like a, you know, like a brother from day one, you know, we came in together and you know, we kind of had a common goal to kind of, you know, go out and compete, you know, constantly working on the game, working on our craft and, you know, talking about football and talking about, you know, how we could get better. And that was something we kind of, we kind of had a connection with and that kind of, you know, now started a, a long time friendship and, you know, something that, that you kind of, you kind of think about, you know, coming in, like, you know, you got everybody coming from so many different areas, you don't know who you're going to connect with, who you're going to, you know, be friends with. And, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, I would go to, you know, go to bat for it. So, you know, definitely a, a, a brother and a longtime friend. And, and having that brother and, and longtime friend with you, he ultimately decided with this final season to, to graduate from Syracuse and have this, this extra year, this graduate year, to play immediately. What can you say about – 
that decision, knowing that you both came in together, you're both going out together, and you both have chances elsewhere. He'll be at Temple, and you'll be at Western Michigan. Just what you can say about the irony of coming in at the same time and now both trying new waters at the same time. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's definitely something we didn't you know, see, you know, you know, three years down the line or, or three years before, and, you know, we didn't kind of see us, you know, part of way, you know, uh, five last year at good, but, you know, things happen in the course of, 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 uh, of a program, and, you know, you got to make the best decision for you, and, you know, we talked about it, you know, many, you know, numerous times, you know, we're also really trying to, you know, play together again, and, you know, um, but, you know, I'm really happy for him, you know, at his, uh, at, at Temple, because I think that's a good fit for him, and, you know, he can definitely uh, thrive in that program, and, you know, he wished me the best of luck as well. And, you know, I just think the whole process, you know, you know, everything happened for a reason. And, you know, I appreciate, you know, uh, you know, everything that's been done thus far for me and him. And, you know, and, and the connection we have in the ball we're going to continue to have. And to have that bond moving forward, Juwan, just what you what can you what you can say about you know having to leave your your brothers. I mean, essentially your family guys that you've spent a lot of time with. How difficult was that in this decision for you? Uh, you know, it was definitely tough. It was tough. You know, um, you know, having people you 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 work out with, you, you bleed with, you sweat with, and now you got to go and uh, you know, essentially. Get some new brothers in. The relationship you have with those guys, you know, um, isn't gonna go anywhere. You know, it's just, uh, it's just put on, put on hold. And you know, I, I understand it. You know, they understand it. And you know, in this game, you know, you, you, you meet so many people in the process, and you know, trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's best for you, and while figuring out, also, you know, how not to, you know, do it in such a negative way. You want to make sure everything's done in a positive way, and. If people can understand that you're doing what's best for you, then you know that's just a shift that you know I have to think. But um, you know, you know, going through it, you know, it's definitely tough and hard. But uh, it's something we kind of we kind of uh, pick up and, and and run with. That coming from Juwan Dow's cornerback formerly of Syracuse, now moving forward to play with Western Michigan. We obviously know the connection. Uh, Western Michigan has head football coach Tim Lester, who used to be the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Syracuse. Uh, Jake Moreland, who is on the offensive staff with the tight ends, he is the assistant coach to Tim Lester at Western Michigan, also an offensive coordinator and offensive line coach on the team. And Tim Doust, who's the defensive coordinator of the team, who obviously spent his time with Syracuse on the defensive line. So having some familiar faces, just what you can say about how that weighed into your decision, having Coach Lester, Coach Moreland, and Coach Doust all here with the Western Michigan Broncos. Uh, you know, it's definitely a, a very unique situation. You know, um, you know, many guys that leave, they don't get the opportunity to, to get coached by the same people they got coached by, you know, when they first started the process. And, you know, it's definitely an awesome feeling. And you know, I look forward to, you know, getting back into the, the room with those guys, and, you know, uh, just talking about the common goal, and that's winning. And I think at the end of the day, this level, you know, it's so hard. It's so hard to win. And, um, you know, uh, when you get a, when you get a scheme you're familiar with, you know, you don't have to start from scratch all over again. You know, I think it's awesome. I think it's, you know, give you a little edge. Um, and I definitely think, uh, you know, Coach Lester and Coach Dallas and Coach Morgan, you know, they're all, you know, on that winning page. And I think, um, you know, with a good year this year, you know, we, we can make it work. And when you, uh, you and I had spoke a little bit off the air, Juwan, about how you had reached out to them once you had the opportunity, you know, so – some guys are told that they can't go within the division or within the conference or within the schedule and whatnot. Syracuse is playing Western Michigan the first game of the season here in 2018. So just bring me into how you got cleared to speak with teams that are on the schedule and just how it all came about. Um, you know, it, it was definitely a process. Um, process I kind of had to appeal, um, you know, through, through the Syracuse uh, school. And um, and it was something that was tough, um, being that you know you know Syracuse is on the schedule, and you try to um, you try to uh, you try to you know work things out as best as possible because you don't have any bad blood on either side, and and, um, and you know it was tough uh, making a decision, but I got to do what's best to get in here day, and 
you know, surprisingly, you know, Syracuse is the first game, so I definitely look forward to it, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a, a great season opener. <laughs> and, and just what that means to you to know that you're going to have Syracuse right away on this schedule, just – just what your takeaways are from an opportunity like this to to not only have just played at Syracuse, but the very first game you'll be a Bronco is the very first game that Syracuse has on the docket. Um, I would be lying to you if I told you that I, I wasn't looking forward to it. Um, you know, um, you know those guys over there, you know, are, are competitors. You know, I have nothing but respect for them, and you know, love for the players. Um, as well, and you know, my time there is is up, and you know, um, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy to think that you know you're gonna be playing somebody that you he was just you know going to going to war with you know the players you know last fall, and and as crazy as it sounds, you know, um, it, it's something I look forward to. You know, they look forward to it, and you know, we look to you know uh, you know have a great game against those guys, and you know, I wouldn't uh, want to change that game. For, for for anybody on the schedule and you know I definitely look forward to you know playing them uh week one and and having that like you said you'd be lying if you said that that you weren't excited about this opportunity and weren't excited about the fact that it's going to be happening you said you had to kind of appeal the process a little bit bring me into that um you know definitely appeal process you know it had nothing to do with uh, athletics uh with football and you know it was just purely on my standing with Syracuse University, and you know, um, you know, they had told me um, that you know I've uh, upheld everything you know I needed to do on the academic part of it, and I didn't have any you know obligations, any negative obligations on that part, and they thought it'd be best for them to uh, grant me a full release. And you know, in terms of football, you know, if, if I had to even think or imagine. What I did wrong, and, and that, and that, uh, on that side, you know, it wouldn't be anything. Um, you know, it, it was just a mutual decision um, for both sides to kind of, you know, part ways. And um, you know, those coaches over there are, you know, awesome, and um, you know, they're doing something really good over there. And you know, can't uh, can't imagine me having any, you know, bad blood with those guys. But at any day when we step on the field, um, week one, you know, it's gonna be nothing but competition and and. Uh, and strategy and, and just competing at the end of the day. So that's what I look forward to. Speaking here with Juwan Dowles on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Juwan, I've known, like I said, going through his recruitment to Syracuse, all the way through Syracuse, and now heading on to Western Michigan. The defense changed while you were there. You had an attack-happy defense, a blitz-happy defense, a get-after-it with within a half of a millisecond type of defense, and that shifted under Brian Ward to a defense that was more of a read and react, you know, find the gaps as a zone, kind of look out for spaces as opposed to attacking right away, maybe wait for the play to develop before getting after it. It definitely looks like night and day, at least from the outside looking in and, and from my viewpoint watching these games through the years. What can you say about adjusting to the defenses and, and just what you took away from being recruited to play an attack-happy defense and then having more of a read-and-react defense recently? Uh, it definitely was a big change. You know, Obviously, you're going from a, from a more attack you know, to 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 a more sit back and kind of see what's going on defense, and you know, um, you know, that was one of the biggest you know things in my decision that I kind of had to just uh, just you know weigh on, and um, you know, most schemes definitely you know were good, and you know, you know, Coach Ward is a great defensive coach, and you know, Coach Buller was a, a great defensive coach as well, so you, know, you can't take anything away from that. But the schemes definitely you know definitely changed. Um, I think. Um, Based on the the offenses that was that was at hand, you know they kind of had to adjust, and I think you know that scheme, you know, for Coach Ward works very well, um, you know, um, and uh, you know Coach Bulls works it very well. But that's so that's so different that you know players and and within the scheme has to be you know used to certain things, and you know they do a great job with recruiting as well, and. You know, they find the guys, you know, that fit their scheme, and that's really all that matters at the end of the day. You know, if you have the guys that can play that scheme, then, you know, you can kind of, uh, you know, be very, you know, very different with, you know, how you make the play calls and, and things like that. So I think um, 
know, the schemes are very different, you know. Um, but that was one of the things that kind of, you know, you know, weighed in on my, on my, my option as well. How difficult is it, though, when you when you look at everything, how how difficult was it to adjust to that? And do you think that as he as a defensive player, that it hinders you or affects you in a negative way when you're trying to put together film and, and try for an opportunity in the NFL? Do you think that that this defense? hinders a defensive player from from maybe having that film of the explosiveness that maybe you were used to before uh personally um adjusting to it was wasn't that big of a deal um you know um you know i was able to kind of you know fit into that you know scheme you know rather quickly you know based on you know what the coaches are asking and you know i'm a fast learner so it wasn't you know too too difficult for me um but in terms of you know just overall changing the whole scheme up with with a uh, with a recruiting class that wasn't kind of adjusted to it, you know it, it's going to take a year or two. Um, and that first year was really like an adjustment period, you know, uh, you know for both sides. You know, the coaches finding out who their players are, and the players finding out what the coach really want. You know, you know out of a particular uh, uh, play call and things like that. So you know, it's definitely you know a filling out process. But I think once you understand, you know the whole concept of the scheme, I think it becomes really easy. And, you know, it's definitely not going to happen overnight. Um, it's going to take some time. And, you know, I definitely think, um, you know, the coaches did a great job with teaching it to us. And, you know, you know, uh, you know, having that first year, you know, with that upset against Virginia Tech, um, you know, it was definitely uh, big. And, you know, that was probably midway through the season. And I think, um, you know, the scheme definitely, definitely takes some time to adjust to. It's not going to be anything, you know, that happens rather quickly. And for you, the kind of comfort level, I know you said it wasn't too difficult to adjust to, but what is happening in Western Michigan and with a familiar coach like Tim Doust, just what you can say about what excites you about that defense and knowing that he was a part of the defensive side of the ball at Syracuse, wasn't the coordinator, but just how much you know about his defensive scheme and, and if that's kind of a return to what you had with Schaefer and Chuck Bola. Um, you know, definitely that scheme was something, you know, at the time, you know, and I was coming to kind of mold into. Um, you know, I think um, you know, my second year, you know, I was really growing in it and to, you know, flip and 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 uh and start another program, another scheme, you know, was definitely um was definitely shocking at the at at the first start of it. But um Something that that uh that definitely you know Coach Dallas defense is something I can definitely you know start on the ground you know running with it and you know I don't have to adjust too much because it's something that you know I was familiar with at the start and you know, I think it's gonna be really good with uh with my uh, skill set to kind of you know getting that you know scheme and kind of you know focus on you know you know pushing myself and kind of get myself to that to that next level. Speaking here with Juwan Dowles, heading off from Syracuse to play his final season of eligibility with the Western Michigan Broncos. What do you like the most about Tim Doust? What makes you want to be around him? Like I said, when, when he was at Syracuse, he was the defensive line, and now he's the overall defensive coordinator. What do you like about his style? What do you like about his attitude or his personality that makes you want to play for him? Um, he's definitely, uh, you know, um, he's going to tell you how it is, you know, and whether it's uh, positive or negative. And, um, you know, as a player, I think you should want that, you know, out of a coach. You know, you don't want to be, you know, lied to. You don't want to be sugar-coated. And that's definitely, uh, you know, something that I see in Coach Dallas. And, you know, how he's been, you know, you know, from the start of my, you know, first couple of years, you know, in college football. And um, I think I definitely look forward to, you know, him doing that and kind of, you know, um, that relationship and that bond we have, you know, we have we have had it. We're going to continue to have on through. It's just, it's just awesome about Coach Dow. And as far as Tim Lester, I know you're on the defensive side of the ball and he was an offensive coordinator when he was at Syracuse, but what do you like about him and, and what are your thoughts about him as your new head coach? Uh, coach Tim, uh, I mean, Coach Lester, he's, he's awesome. You know, he's, uh, he's a player's coach and you know, he's going to, uh, you know, do things his way and, you know, adjust if you have to. But, you know, he's all about having fun and, and playing the game of football at the highest level. And I think, um, you know, with with uh, with with him as the head coach, you know, he's going to kind of, 
you know, spread to us, you know, the same energy he has. And I think you know, that's awesome in the head coach as well. They left Syracuse. Uh, you stayed through the last few seasons here, and you've had a couple seasons with Dino Babers. Yeah, yeah. What do you miss the most about this staff? Because you're going to get three of them back by going to Western Michigan. Um, I would say, you know, definitely, you know, the way they keep it you know, up front. You know, uh, if you're somebody, you know, that they trust and they're willing to, you know, go to bat for you, just like you would go to bat for them, that's something they'll tell you that up front. And, you know, these coaches definitely don't keep, you know, keep anything hidden. You know, everything's going to be on the table. And at the end of the day, um, it's either – you can play, you can't play, and, and I think that's the, the the bottom line at this at this level. And I think um, you know you have so many you, you get you, you don't get too many opportunities. And I think um, you know these coaches do a good job at evaluating you know, evaluating guys and putting guys in the right position to make plays. And I think um, that's something I can kind of you know get back used to and and uh, and, and kind of uh, enjoy as well as you know being my last year as well. Unfortunately, we have to, you know, with you as a student athlete, you have to deal with the fact that coaches get fired, coaches leave their posts, they they move forward either because of the school's doing or their own doing. How did you weather the storm, and what did you learn from having to go from not just a different head coach, but two totally different staffs that didn't keep anybody, and going from Schaefer's staff and then the the complete deletion of all of them and then bringing in Dino Babers and his staff. What did you learn from that? Um, I learned that, you know, you can't really take anything for granted. Um, you know, like I said, you know, before, you know, this game is is is, is definitely, you know, not handed to you. You know, you gotta earn it and, you know, uh, you know, circumstances happen to where, you know, um a new staff come in and, you know, um they want change just like the next person in. You know, um, you know, it was tough seeing some of those guys, you know, leave, leave the program. And, you know, uh, you know, you know, even now, you know, it's crazy to see, you know, uh, so many leave and so many, you know, go off to different places. And, then, you know, you, you gain a, 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 a brotherhood, you know, a brothership with them. And, and now you have to kind of, you know, get new brothers pretty much. And, you know, it, it, it's definitely a different process and something you have to get used to. You know, you know, this level is it definitely, um, it's definitely, uh, you know, harsh in a way, but that's the way it is. You got to pick it up and you got to run with it. That coming from Juwan Dallas. Juwan, really quick here. You're a corner, so Nick Sanchez, he's an assistant coach for Western Michigan, and he is overseeing the cornerbacks. How much do you know about Nick Sanchez at this point, your your new position head coach? Um, I know, uh, you know, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's a safe guy, and, you know, he runs his corner just like, you know, Coach Schaefer would, and, you know, it may not be exact, maybe some, you know, some different, uh, you know, touches to it, and 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 uh, you really can't go wrong with that. But at the end of the day, you know, you know, he was brought up, you know, you know, through Coach Safer as well, and you know, that's something that that definitely, you know, you know, give a connection right off the bat. And you know, on top of that, you know, you know, he's from South Florida, so you know, um, you know, we have a few uh, a few similarities in that. And I think, um, you know, going down the line, you know, I'm I'm looking to. You know, get to know him as as my DB coach, and you know, he's getting, and he's looking forward to getting to know me as well. So I think you know, that's definitely going to be a, a fun process, and I, I look forward to it. And you having that opportunity, like you said, uh, a Schaefer connection for you. Schaefer, you know, him and I have always had a good relationship. I respected him his whole time here. We got to spend some time together, quality time. I said some of the. Probably the best conversation I ever had with him was was never aired when we had a couple hours to kind of just sit and talk. What do you miss about Scott Schaefer and and for the people that gave him such a bad rap? What do you want people to know about Scott Schaefer? Oh, you know Scott Schaefer. Um, you know Coach Schaefer. You know he's you know he's awesome. Um, from you know from off the field to on the field. You know, uh, you know he's a great uh, you know he's a great coach and you know, he coached the hell out of his players and. I think um, as a player and as a cornerback, you know, he loves the DB. So, um, you know, I got a, I got a chance to spend a lot of time with him. And you know, he's all about the little things. And on top of the little things, he's all about, you know, are you able to make that play? Uh, can you make that play? Okay, if you don't know how to make that play, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put you in the best position possible to make that play. And I think, um, you know, at this level, you know, it's all about making plays. And I think, um, you know, having him to kind of teach the, all the details into that and also – 
you know, having his technique to kind of show, you know, um, show us, uh, uh, you know, a different a different realm or a different element of the game. You know, it, it's awesome. You know, he's one hell of a defensive coach, and, and I think, um, you know, he's gotten a lot of respect over the years um, in that regard. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely, you know, he's definitely a, a coach who's going to coach you hard and off the field. He's going he's gonna to love you, and, uh, and, uh, and he's going to win games like anybody else. What's the biggest difference that you took away between Scott Schaefer and Dino Babers? Um, honestly, uh, you know, Scott Schaefer was a defensive guy. Um, I, I was around him a lot more. Um, you know, Dino Babers, uh, I wasn't around him as much. You know, put them in spurts, but really they didn't, you know, know who he really was. But um, as a coach, you know, I think, um, you know, they both coach hard. Um, you know, I know Coach Babers on the offensive side, uh, but they both coach hard. You know, um, and, and time to time there, you know, you know, they'll give their input on different things that they might see in the course of a practice or a game or game film. And you know, they both definitely coach hard. And I think um, wasn't really any glaring, you know, differences um, in terms of that. But um, you know, definitely. Uh, you know, they both are, are two hard, you know, two hard coaches, and they want to win games just as well. Juwan Dell's heading on to Western Michigan. You're going to be in the Mid American Conference in the MAC. Just what you can say about how much you know about the MAC currently and about the competition within the MAC. Um, definitely over the years, you know, the MAC definitely has has gotten has put so many kids in, into the into the NFL. Um. You know, stats, you know, speak for itself. And um, uh, I think, uh, you know, it, it's such a it's a, a good league to be in. Um, you know, they have teams that throw the ball, they have teams that run the ball. So you get a very good dynamic of, 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 of uh, offensive schemes and different looks. Um, and I think, uh, you know, that's what the NFL key on and look on, you know, you know as well. And, you know, as far as the players, you know, they definitely have, you know, players that, you know, contribute – um, you know, in the league and pretty much from every team, top to bottom. And, and I think that's very, you know, that's very good. There's no team that's going to dominate the, the conference. There's no team that's going to be really bad. You know, it's always a battle. And I think, um, you know, I can definitely look forward to that, you know, coming into this league and just knowing, you know, how hard they play, how hard they work. And, you know, the, the appreciation for winning games is definitely, is definitely there. And, and, uh, and that's what I look forward to. You have some irony here in the fact that Bowling Green is inside of the MAC. That's where Dino Babers came from, who you just had as a coach. And then, so you're the former Syracuse coaches that were there when you got into Syracuse. Some of those are in Western Michigan. And then the head coach that's at Syracuse now was at Bowling Green in the MAC. And at the same time, in the West Division, where Western Michigan is, you played up against Central Michigan while you were at Syracuse, and here is Central Michigan again. So just what you could say about the irony of coaches being at Syracuse, now you're going back to see some of them. The ones that left the MAC, are, are, some of them are at Syracuse, and then Central Michigan is a team that you've already gone up against. So there's kind of a, a little bit of excitement here on the irony side of things and just how small the world is in sports. It's definitely small, um... You know, there's so many teams on the college level. Um, you wouldn't think, like, that this kind of thing would happen. Um, but, you know, it happens, and, you know, you got to pick it up and run with it. And, uh, you know, I think um, <laughs> to see, you know, the, the coaching changes and how they how they go within such a short period of time, you know, it's definitely mind-boggling. And, and it definitely, um, it's definitely not a coincidence, but um, <laughs> it uh, – it's uh it's crazy everything runs in circles and you know people know certain people and you know you know things are able to unfold the way it is and you're moving forward so i want uh, the fans to know with western michigan what is special about you as a corner what have you learned in your time playing college football what is western michigan getting when they get you um definitely uh they're getting a hard worker they got some artists kind of you know, be able to contribute, you know, rather fast. Uh, we've been a, a older guy. Um, my experience uh, is, is, is very good. My knowledge for the game is good as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just looking to work and, and win games, you know, 
it's like the fans are, are, are wanted and, and the, the coaches and everything. So you know, I definitely um, bring, a, bring a lot to the table, and you know, I'm looking forward to, to getting out there with the guys and, 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 uh, and uh, getting this thing rolling. Juwan Dowles heading off to Western Michigan in his final season of eligibility for college football coming off of his time at Syracuse. Juwan, it's been great to talk with you over the years. Great to have you on today, and you can be sure that I'll be reaching out to you here as you continue your career at Western Michigan. Would love to have you back on the show, and I know that you'll be amped for that first game, and I'm sure all the way throughout the season, so I'll look forward to having you back on. All right, thank you. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily you know we bring in local produce we prepare to order in the kitchen we hand bread our chicken we hand spin our milkshakes it's it's great food it doesn't taste like fast food i I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a chick-fil-a restaurant it's different we we try to treat people with intentional kindness here which is very different and deeper than good customer service and so i think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have at any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. Hi, this is Domenico Vitali, owner of Giovanni's Formalware where you look great and feel even better with our renowned tailoring and alteration services on any suit or any tuxedo from anywhere. Call 315-455-8729. That's 315-455-8729. Stop in locally on Route 11 in North Syracuse next to the Ponderosa Plaza where you can choose your style, get fitted, and tailored all at Giovanni's Formalware. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice when buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking pre-owned, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or hondacity-cny.com. It would be a pity if you don't shop. For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing, with Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your events, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing, proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315 315- 738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. I want to thank, once again, Juwan Dowles for being a part of the show and being on the broadcast here with us this morning, heading from Syracuse on to Western Michigan. Coming up here in just a few minutes, Rodney Williams, who is also a secondary member on Syracuse, playing as a safety on the team, is heading off to the Temple Owls, and I'm excited about the opportunity of bringing him up here on the show with you to speak with you in just a little bit here with 
Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. So very, very much looking forward to having him on to the broadcast in just a few minutes here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We will be joined by Rodney Williams, who hails from New Jersey, came to Syracuse, and will ultimately be heading back to familiar parts and he won't be going back to new jersey but he'll be close enough in philadelphia so really appreciate him being a part of the show and and being part of the broadcast it really does mean a lot to have him here on the broadcast today with juan dallas cornerback of syracuse heading to western michigan to play corner for them in his final season of collegiate eligibility and rodney williams who played with him in the secondary at syracuse as a safety will be moving forward, and he'll be joining the show in just a few minutes here in about four minutes. So we will take a fast break. We'll come back with Rodney Williams. Temple Owls, Temple Tough. You're going to hear us discuss that, and that is something that was brought up by his coach, Jeff Collins. I had the blessing and the opportunity to interview Jeff when Jeff was first coming into his job with the Temple Owls. So when he was first coming onto the program, I had an opportunity to speak with him, and it means a lot to me that I got to kind of be a part of that ushering in for him to the American Athletic Conference. And then after that, you know, obviously we've spoken numerous times since then, and I really do appreciate having him on the show and and everything that Jeff Collins has done to help keep Temple moving in the positive direction following Matt Rule deciding to move forward. Johnny wants to know when we're playing horse because Johnny and I put a bet together for Chick-fil-A. Well, Johnny, you and I can do that this week if you'd like to, brother. I'll make time to play some horse. We'll take a step aside here on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora and come back with Rodney Williams in just a moment. This is a Wake Up Call Fast Break. Gear up with the real deal at Dreisig Apparel. Creating what people are going to see and learn about you before they even meet you. Gear up for what you need for your team, business, or event. To look professional, look good, and feel good, outfit yourself at DreisigApparel.com. That's D-R-E-I-S-S-I-G Apparel.com. The only place to gear up with the real deal. What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands. With Fan Hands, the ultimate sports fan accessory, find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on FanHands.com, where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear Fan Hands. Utica Pizza Company spells family, your family, my family, their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu. We'd be here forever. So let me say this. Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens... They're the best. Utica Pizza Company. Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company. We're here with Rodney Williams, who recently has uh, moved on from Syracuse and will be playing for the Temple Owls. And we got him on the line. Rodney, how you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, man. And Rodney, you and I have we we've spoken since before you got to Syracuse when you were getting recruited, committed, did your letter of intent and whatnot, and then went on to the Orange. And here we are again today. Can, can you go back to those days of when you signed on the dotted line and, and just what you can say about your time at Syracuse? Oh, so being able to you know be on full scholarship, you know, go to go to college, you know, pretty much for free, you know, to have the opportunity that was, you know, that definitely changed my life. I was, I'm a, extremely appreciative of that. And then, you know, the, the time I had at Syracuse, you know, it, 
you know, I met some of my best friends there. I had a great time, a great experience. Um, you know, everything was great. I wish we won a little bit more, but, you know, as you all do, but experience overall, um, it was awesome. And and when you look back on your time at Syracuse, like you said, uh, some of your best friends you met there, who are some of the guys that, that are always going to be close to you from Syracuse? Well, I mean, you know, normally – uh, you know, everyone pretty much on the team you you met you you make good friends with, but um, you know your class in particular. That's normally the closest people that um, that you hang around. So you know Zaire, um, Juwan, Cordell, and then you know Chris Frederick. You know, but um, uh, Irv, Steve. You know all of those guys. But um, you know when you're on the team, it, it's it's just like it's family, and the same thing with the coaches. So. They're they extended they're extended family to me, you know. They'll all be a part of my heart, and I'm a Keith alum, so you know I forever bleed orange. And looking back at what you said, I would like to thank the entirety of Syracuse University for their efforts on helping me graduate with such a prestigious degree, as well as succeed on the football field. The opportunities I've been given here and the relationships that have been created are beyond imaginable. I'm extremely appreciative of that. I wish the staff players nothing but the best going forward. With that being said, I've decided to transfer for my final year of eligibility. This uh, th- this final season of eligibility, when when you have that graduate year and you can play right away, a lot of guys lately have been taking advantage of this. Just bring me into you know the situation for you and and just how you went through this process and ultimately decided that you wanted to take part in this as well. Okay, yeah, so I came back um, this this spring semester with intentions on staying at Syracuse. But, you know, after looking at um, some different options, I, I had graduated um, this fall semester. So if I decided to leave a little bit earlier, I, I would have been able to do spring somewhere. But, you know, that wasn't my intention. I wanted to come back. But after looking at some options, um, and maybe the idea of coming home, you know, being close to family, I mean, even though it's four and a half hours away, um, you know, everyone doesn't have access to come, you know, come up to Syracuse. So I thought maybe, you know, coming home was an option. So after looking at um, some certain things and looking at different defenses, you know, something that might fit my style better, I thought that might be a great opportunity for me. But, you know, I didn't leave um, on bad terms, you know, um, the the coaches, you know, wish I would have stayed. And I'm it it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a bad ending. You know, they understood where I was coming from. And it wasn't really a playing time thing because, you know, I played a lot of ball and you know, I would have had a big role going forward. But it was a tough decision to make, you know, because I've been around with the guys for four years. So, you know, it, w- it was tough to leave them, you know, and, you know, go wear a different, different uniform. But I think I had to do what was best for uh, me and my family at the time. That coming from safety Rodney Williams, who spent his his time as far as his bachelor's degree at Syracuse, a medical redshirt in 2014, then your redshirt freshman, redshirt sophomore, redshirt, redshirt junior years, 2015, 16, and 17. To move on, like you said, the coaching staff didn't want you to leave. Did you feel that you got everything that you could out of this? I know you said you wanted to play somewhere where the defense you know, went after kind of your talents a little bit more. The, when you came into Syracuse, the defense was supposed to be played a certain way. It was it was an attack happy defense. The safety supposed to you know come around the edge and get some opportunities at sacks and whatnot. It was that it was that vicious and ferocious and tenacious defense. Whereas the Brian Ward defense is more read and react, get your spaces as opposed to attacking. And how did you kind of? fit into that or do you feel like you never fit into that just what you could say about the change of defenses because from the outside looking in it looked like a pretty drastic change yeah it was it was it was definitely much different um i would say that both coaching staffs had different philosophies and there's nothing wrong with that at all um coach Schaefer and Buller ran you know more aggressive defense but the offense you know wasn't up tempo we ran between the tackles you know we played you know real physical football um, we still play physical with the new coaching staff, but, you know, the up-tempo offense, the more exciting, you know, for fans, uh, you put up more numbers. And with, it, with an offense like that, you really can't run an overly 
an aggressive defense because you're going to play about 80 to 100 snaps every game. So, you know, that that would be tough to do, especially if you don't have, you know, if you're not extremely deep, you know, at all positions. So, especially with the ACC, we um, we see a lot of up-tempo teams now, nowadays. But um, I would say both both coaching staffs, you know, did um, did well in the way they tried to attack things. I thought Coach Wood, is, I think Coach Wood is a really good defensive coordinator. You know, he's really smart. He tries to get you on the perfect play. Um but it, it's just it's just different schemes, you know, different styles of the both of the two. But I, I thought they both worked well. But um, I thought maybe if we were a little bit deeper or finished games a little bit better, I thought I think we could have won a lot more. And I think we did get better from year two, from year one uh, with coach with coach Babers. But you know, with some injuries, it was tough to show in the win loss column. And, and I wanted to, you know, kind of look at that a little bit more for you is, is just, you know, what you can say about going through this, you know, what, what was the disconnect? Because you defeat a top 25 Virginia Tech team, you defeat the reigning champion, number two ranked team in the nation, Clemson, who didn't have a loss at the time. And then yet the team finishes four and eight in the two seasons under Babers, there's no bowl berth. And a lot of struggles inside of the ACC, two and six both years. What was the disconnect to you? What was it that just was working for some games but not for every game? Um, it's hard to pinpoint one exact thing, but um, you know, injuries never help. Injuries never help when you have to, um, you know, play guys that haven't had as as much experience. And then at the quarterback position, you know, Zach Mahoney is, is a good quarterback and same with um, with, with Rex Culpepper. But there's just some things that Dungy does that, you, you know, you can't really, uh, like, emulate. And there's things that he can do outside of the pocket and, um, you know, extend plays and then throw it up to Steve, throw it up to Aaron. Like, he, he does a great job of that. And there's something that you really can't teach someone else to do. So with how we um, made explosive plays on offense, I thought he did a good job of sometimes making something out of nothing. And you know, after you know, after he got hurt, it was somewhat hard for us to to not. I'm not going to say score, but it was a little bit harder to play four quarters against really good football teams because the, the last four games were extremely tough opponents. Um, Boston College was on the come up. They played really well. Wake Forest going up tempo. They played, you know, great offense. And we had Florida State, who is still Florida State, even though they lost their starting quarterback. You know, they have a bunch of guys around him to make plays. And then Louisville, of course, you know, playing against the reigning uh, Hydra with it. Speaking here with Rodney Williams, going from Syracuse to Temple. Before I let you go, Rodney, to like you said, you know, you look at you look at different things with Dungey not being out there and whatnot, and some difficulty in scoring. How was practice? I mean, did you feel defensively that, or even as a team, that it was hard to get your legs because practice is supposed to be so fast and and what you're practicing up against? Did you almost you know feel like by the time you got to games that you have been you had been worked so hard that it was hard to kind of get your legs under you, or, or do you not feel that way? Oh, no, I think, I think the strength staff, you know, in the training room, they did, a, they did a great job starting with Babers all the way down. Um, you know, they worked us hard, but they, they, they worked us smart as well. So, you know, they pushed us physically, but they didn't put us in a position where, you know, we weren't ready by game day or we were a liability to injury. So I, I think they did a great job with that. They did a great job of training us in the summer and uh, throughout the season, um, you know, staying in good shape. So we pushed, um, we were pushed by the coaches um, and, the, and the strength staff, but they did a great job of, um, you know, helping us recover. And, you know, by game day, I mean, you're going to have some nicks and bruises with, you know, with football. But in terms of doing everything they could, I think they did a great job of that. And then to move forward and to have this opportunity, what was it – what bring me into Temple and how this all happened? How you linked up with Temple? I know you said it's not too far away from home for you in New Jersey, but how did Temple come about? How did all the pieces kind of fall in place? Okay, so um, I know 
I actually know a couple players that just graduated that are now, you know, taking steps to go to the NFL, the NFL camps and whatnot now. And I know some current players, you know, it's really, it's the closest, it's very close to home. And um, I know they play good football over here, play really good defense. Um, they won, I think, 10 games the uh, past two seasons. And then last year, I think they, um, under Coach Collins first year, they went 7-6 and six and won in that bowl game. But um, I think they, they have a bright future. Um, you know, it's a lot of buzz around this area about Temple football. And when I decided that I was going to leave, I definitely thought that that was one place that, you know, I had to make sure that I visited, uh, no matter, um, you know, what other schools contacted me, in which I've, you know, I kept this close, but, you know, I've I had good opportunities from, you know, some, from top 25 programs, but I feel as though that with it being home, you know, with the brand of football they play, with the culture that they have, you know, the coaching staff that they have, you know, the training that takes place there, I think it's a great opportunity for me. And, you know, to, you know, just to get better and to play my final season. And and like you said, you had some top 25 opportunities. Now that it's all said and done and, and you're at Temple, can you let us know kind of who was at least interested in you? When I, I've, I've, I've kept that um, disclosed, but there, there were some really good programs. I can, I can say that with some very good, head coaches, um, and, you know, you know, really good programs. But, you know, my only focus at this point is, you know, Temple and what we can do going forward, you know, to win as many games as possible, compete for a championship while, you know, rooting on my guys over at Syracuse. What do you think about the American Athletic Conference? I mean, this, this is a conference that I have covered uh, very devoutly since its institution, even before – it's institution. So before we wrap up here, speaking with Rodney Williams, safety heading from Syracuse to play his final season with the Temple Owls and be a part of their team, the American Athletic Conference, featuring teams like the undefeated UCF Knights, the South Florida Bulls, who you know obviously has gone up against Syracuse while you were at Syracuse, uh, Temple, East Carolina, Cincinnati, UConn, the Memphis Tigers, who returned their head coach Mike Norvell for his third season. They've done a lot. The Houston Cougars, who are always out there. Navy midshipmen, who are known to run the best triple option in the country. SMU Mustangs, who have gotten better. The Tulane Green Wave and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. How much do you know about the American Athletic? Because I could sit here and go up and down this conference and talk about the level of competition and, and the lack of respect, maybe, from the outside looking in. But if you actually pay attention to it, there there's a lot in this conference, which is why they say that it should be a power six, not a power five. How much do you know about the conference? Um, I do know it's ex- extremely competitive, um, you know, from top to bottom. I do believe that it's a, a very good conference and it may be overlooked. And now that, you know, I'm going to be starting to watch film and get to see with my own eyes, you know, how competitive it is, and, you know, what great players it produces as well as, you know, um, coaches head coaches and assistants. So um, I do think that, you know, offensively, there's a different variety. You get up-tempo offenses, spread, but it's a traditional, you know, it's a triple option. So there's a lot that you're going to have to be prepared for, whereas, you know, some other conferences maybe have one or two identities, um, whereas the American, they have, you know, a lot of different things that, um, that the coaches like to run. Um, I, I think it, I think it's very uh, it's a very deep conference, and as you can see, if you do well in the conference, you can um, you know maybe make a New Year's six New Year's six bowl, which UCF did, and was able to you know play Auburn tough, and then you know wind up going undefeated. So I think as you can see, Auburn was a great SEC team um, this this past year. So um, UCF as well. Uh, I mean, USF, excuse me, with, uh, you know, Flowers at quarterback. They they have a great system over there, a great head coach. And then, you know, Memphis, they've done a great job. You have Houston. You know, I think it's very it's very deep. And um, who, whoever wins the conference will have a – maybe even, um, you know, com- people that are competing for the conference will have a um, great shot at good bowl games, you know, to play power five schools and – I know some Power 5 schools don't want to play 
or don't want to put um, some American conference schools on their non-conference list because because of the level of competition that they have. But I think the work they do speaks for itself. But when you take a closer look to it, you can um, appreciate the competition that the, the conference offers. And two really quick here, Coach Jeff Collins, your new head coach with the Temple Owls. You know he's got that hashtag Temple Tough. He loves speaking on social media. He got out in front of it, and I actually did an extensive conversation with him before he started his first season when he got hired by Temple. We had a a nice conversation about a little bit of everything that he was bringing to the table, including the fact that he sees social media as a positive thing. He gets out in front of it, and that he doesn't police the players that that he trusts you guys to police yourselves and to know yourself how to act on social media. What do you think about his social media game, and what do you think about being hashtag Temple Tough? <laughs> yeah, so um, Coach Collins brings a great aspect, you know, to the city of Philadelphia, not only um, Temple alone, but, you know, the attitude he brings, um, you know, how well-prepared he is. Um, he does a good job of getting people around, um, around uh, the program. You know, he had some... He had uh, some teachers come in to the spring practice, you know, see what it was like to be like to be a student athlete, go through the meetings, um, watch a practice. You know, he's very animated. Um, you know, he he does a, he does a great job. And what I do, what I have noticed is that they have a great culture here. So in terms of you know how to act, not only on social media but around the building, um, on campus. You know, back home when you're with your family, they have a high, um, high standards, super high standards here. So that's just something that, you know, he would expect. You know, he's going to treat you like a grown man. Um, he's going to he's gonna police you when he has to, but he does a great job of setting expectations. And with the culture they have here, everyone um, is held to a high standard. They do a great job of that on and off the field. And you know that UCF decided to claim themselves national champions. And I just, you know, now that you're in this conference, you know, they have the banner that they're national champions. They won undefeated. They paid their coaches as such. What do you think about this? I mean, you're going to be playing them on the on the America East side, you know, in, that, in the East Division of the American Athletic Conference. What do you think about a team that's not – regarded as the national champion but has claimed a national championship what do you think about that well i think about it from their terms that they did a great job of you know going week in the week in out week out being prepared for their opponent um they did a great job they played great offense they challenged a lot of people defensively and i mean all you really can do is is beat the opponent that you have in front of you and they've done it week in and week out so whatever they want to say is up to them, but I thought they had a great season overall, and I, I wish the best of luck to them going forward. Finally, for you, Rodney Williams, what makes you so special going into this team? What do you bring to Temple? What can you do immediately for them? This is your final go-around in college football, so what do you want to say about this final season for you? Um, you know, I'm really excited. You know, not only to play at home, but to play with some of my close friends, and um, um, I like what they have going on here. I love, I love the kind of defensive play they play. I love the way they work out, the mentality they have, the competitive nature that they have instilled. You know, on the practice field, in the weight room, with everything they do in the classroom, study hall. So I'm looking forward to being pushed, but I also I think that I can be taught things from you know players players and coaches on this staff and this team but I also think that I can help them in certain situations as well because I've also you know, I've played a lot of a lot of snaps um, in my career and you know with some of the younger guys and some of the vets you know there's some things that um, you really can't learn until you play or you played a certain amount of snaps and something that helps you slow the game down so I feel as though you know with my experience that I can help you know some players um, come along in the process and with little things, how to prepare for games, how to practice, you know, certain things like that. Um, I think I, I think I bring a lot to the table, but I'm, I'm very excited for this upcoming season.
And you shouted out some of your friends in that. Who are some of the guys you're close with already? Some, uh, Sean Bradley, uh, Rockwell Armstead, um, Kareem Ali. And then there's there's a few guys that graduated this, this past year. But, you know, I, there's a lot of guys on the team that I already knew. And, you know, that makes it an easier transition for me. Not only is it close to home, but there's people already on the team that I know. So, um, you know, they have helped me throughout the process and, you know, what's expected. And they laid everything out for me, not only from the coaches, but, you know, it's different when you have some of the players that look after you as well. That coming from Rodney Williams with Temple with the Owls for this final season. Rodney, we appreciate it very much. So Cherry Hill, New Jersey, Cherry Hill West, heading closer to home and going to be Temple tough right now. We look forward to seeing you out there in maroon and black and, and watching you do your thing. And, and as always, you know you got my support. And I, I'm looking forward to this chapter for you. The irony is that you're going to a team that I've been covering for years. So here we go again, and I hope nothing but success for you. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. This is a wake-up call, Fast Break. Hi, this is Kira from Looking Glass Events, where we're always giving you a reason to celebrate. Whether you have a small business, large business, personal event, or wedding, we are available to plan and coordinate your dream event to life. Every detail, every step, Looking Glass Events is working with you all the way. Call us at 315 315- 702-4653 that's 315-702-4653 or contact us through our website lgweddingsandevents.com Looking Glass Events giving you a reason to celebrate What's the universal language of a fan? Clapping your hands with fan hands the ultimate sports fan accessory. Find your team color, slip them on, and start cheering on your favorite team with 11 different colors always in stock on fanhands.com where you'll find the ultimate sports fan accessory. Real fans wear fan hands. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash DT. Big thank you to Rodney Williams for being a part of the show. He has gone to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, leaving Syracuse, New York, to be Temple Tough with the Temple Owls inside of the American Athletic Conference. Rodney Williams heading to a team, as I just said, that I cover very, very much so uh, the last few years especially. So, you know, happy to have Rodney Williams in familiar grounds and excited for his future with the Temple Owls. So I want to thank him for being a part of the show as well. A safety from Syracuse that had one more season of eligibility after being redshirted. He got his degree at Syracuse and decided to head for a graduate degree with the Temple Owls at Temple University and to be a part of their team as their safety moving forward and can play immediately in the 2018 season. Keeping with football here, some sad news came out yesterday. Dwight Clark, who is known as for his amazing, amazing time with Joe Montana with the San Francisco 49ers. The NFC Championship game, 28-27 win when he had that miraculous catch. Dwight Clark, uh, one of the most memorable plays in NFL history. He passed away this Monday in Montana. 
and uh, this is uh, this was from his Twitter account. He says, "I'm heartbroken to tell you that today I lost my best friend and husband. He passed peacefully, surrounded by many of the people he loved most. I am thankful for all of Dwight's friends, teammates, and 49ers fans." who have sent their love during his battle with a- ALS, Kelly Clark. So Kelly obviously sharing that and, and showing how much love that she has for her husband and best friend. The team said, quote, The San Francisco 49ers family has suffered a tremendous loss today with the passing of Dwight Clark. We extend our condolences and prayers to Dwight's, fa- Dwight's wife, Kelly, his family, friends, and fans as we join together to mourn the death of one of the most beloved figures in 49ers history. For almost four decades, he served as a charismatic ambassador for our team in the Bay Area. Dwight's personality and his sense of humor endeared him to everyone he came into contact with, even during his most trying times. The strength, perseverance, and grace with which he battled ALS will long serve as an inspiration to so many. Dwight will always carry a special place in our hearts, and his legacy will live on as we continue to battle this terrible disease, end quote. He was diagnosed, well, first disclosed his diagnosis in March of 2017 on the website of former 49ers owner Ed DiBartolo Jr. He began feeling weak in 2015, it's also known as a Lou Gehrig's disease, for those of you that, you know, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, the same thing. He's lost strength in both hands, his midsection, lower back, and his right leg, while also losing significant weight. D. Bartolo helped Clark and his family relocate in March to be near him in Whitefish, Montana. And in April, DiBartolo hosted 30 friends and former 49ers to visit Clark at his ranch in Montana. Roger Craig, a former teammate of Dwight Clark, said, quote, it was beautiful because we got to see him smile, end quote. Uh, And he went on to say he almost fainted when he found out of Clark's death, quote, that's all I wanted to see him smiling. We cried. We all got a taste of Dwight. All we wanted to do is see him smile the whole time we were We were all there, and he smiled the whole time. He made us feel good, and I know he felt good knowing he had all those teammates there to support him, end quote. Garrison Hurst was also a former teammate, and he tweeted, quote, we lost a great one, end quote. It's, if you hear me (laughs) kind of breathing or, or huffing here, I'm, trying to hold back tears because just I'm a believer that you can feel energy from people and all the energy I'm getting from Dwight is positive. D. Bartolo said, I cannot put into words how special Dwight was to me and to everyone his life touched. He was an amazing husband, father, grandfather, brother, and a great friend and teammate. He showed tremendous courage and dignity in his battle with ALS. And we hope there will soon be a cure for this horrendous disease, end quote. I will always remember Dwight the way he was, larger than life, handsome, charismatic, and the only one who could pull off wearing a fur coat at our Super Bowl parade. He was responsible for one of the most iconic plays in NFL history that began our run of Super Bowl championships. But to me, he will always be an extension of my family. I love him and I will miss him terribly. Our hearts... And prayers are with his wife, Kelly, his children, and the entire Clark family, end quote. 49ers last season on October 22nd, which is the day after my birthday, held what they called Dwight Clark Day when they faced the Dallas Cowboys. It was his final appearance in front of as many 49ers fans as were there. He addressed the crowd, the ownership, his family, and more than 40 teammates at a suite in Levi's Stadium. Clark said on that day, quote, when Keena Turner, San Francisco's vice president of football affairs, asked me what I wanted to do, whether raise money or have some kind of function, I said, I just want to see my teammates. 
and the 49ers heard that and flew all these players in so I could see them one more time, end quote. The 49ers gave away t-shirts with images of, quote-unquote, the catch, the leaping grab that Dwight Clark had to beat the Cowboys in the 1981 NFC Championship game. It was imprinted over his number 87. Vin Scully had a video tribute that was played on the scoreboard, and Joe Montana introduced Clark. Joe Montana said on Twitter yesterday, quote, Dwight was a vibrant, charismatic soul. Jennifer and I are heartbroken over his passing. While we knew it was, it was inevitably coming, it came way too soon. We are grateful for the decades of love and friendship we shared. End quote. When the 49ers officially closed Candlestick Park for Levi Stadium in 2013, the catch was named the number one play in the stadium's history. Former teammate and Hall of Famer Jerry Rice said, quote, I just love the guy, man, and idolized him. I just sit back and just watch him, and I just wanted to try to emulate him on the football field, off the football field. This guy, he was one of the greatest football players to ever play the game, but also he was a great individual, end quote. Clark spent all of his time in the NFL, which was nine years, with the San Francisco 49ers. He had a pair of Super Bowl titles and two Pro Bowl opportunities he ranks third on san francisco's receiving yards list with 6750 career receiving yards he's fourth on the team in receptions all time with 506 and seventh on the team in touchdown receptions with 48 his career ended in 1987 fitting of his number he moved into the team's front office and had three more super bowl rings as an executive to total five super bowl rings for Dwight Clark with the San Francisco 49ers. Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, said in a statement, All of us in the NFL are saddened by the passing of Dwight Clark. Dwight made many memorable contributions on the field as a two-time Super Bowl champion and later as a member of the front office of the 49ers and Browns. He will ever live on in our memories for the catch, but also for his kind, gentle, and courageous spirit. End quote. He has three children from a Previous marriage, daughter Casey and sons Riley and Mac, and his wife Kelly, also still on this earth. As we move forward without the smile and the charismatic behavior of Dwight Clark, but always with the memory of Dwight Clark. Eric Dickerson had this to say, really sad to hear about the passing of my good friend Dwight Clark. I'll always remember Dwight greeting me with a big smile and hug. We lost a great man who was a legend on and off the field. My thoughts and prayers are with Dwight's family. Since then, there has been obviously an outpouring for everything that's gone on. And it's just, you know, it's just pretty crazy. There's an officer battling colon cancer, and Dwight Clark's page is still, you know, and I believe obviously run by Kelly, uh, trying to push for this. And then we have a video of Dwight who got to meet his horse for the first time, and he's in a wheelchair. This ALS disease is... Terrible. And it takes away so much, but it can never take away someone's spirit. It can never take away someone's ability to live to the best life that they want to have. You may not have your hands. You may not have feeling here. You may lose weight. You may be stricken to a wheelchair, but as Gandhi said, they can chain my body, but they cannot chain my spirit. And we learn from these moments. We live for these moments and these reminders that life is so much better than we think it is. So many times in, in life we, we spend 
thinking that it sucks. That it could be better, it should be better. The girl that we asked out said no. The job that we wanted denied us. Someone in our line of work is trying to tear down our spirit and our reputation. The sickness of this world sometimes seeps into our brain and it makes us think that our life is bad. When in actuality, we live a beautiful, wonderful life. Now, life is not perfect. And there are people that are going through situations that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy in the world. But with that being said, we have the ability to change. We have the ability to make better. We have the ability to improve. And we have the ability to help one another. The Enduring Voices Act by Steve Gleason is now a law. President Trump, for all the negative things that he's in the news for, he signed the, bipar the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018, which includes the Steve Gleason Enduring Voices Act. The act will permanently fix the current Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services policy, limiting access to speech-generating devices for people with degenerative diseases. The Steve Gleason Act, under the leadership of Steve Gleason, who played for the New Orleans Saints and also has ALS, and Team Gleason, the bipartisan legislation was introduced by leading sponsors Senator Bill Cassidy and Senator Amy Klobuchar in the Senate and Republican Kathy McMorris-Rogers and Republican John Larson in the House in conjunction with the ALS Association's National ALS Advocacy Conference in May 2017. Quote, ALS is a devastating disease that often robs people of the ability to communicate with their loved ones and the health care providers who care for them, said Kellen Eat Ballas, president and CEO of the ALS Association. On behalf of people living with ALS, we thank Steve Gleason for his leadership on this issue and applaud Republicans and Democrats for coming together to pass this bipartisan legislation. And, of course, we were proud to play our part in advocating for it, end quote. Steve Gleason said, quote, The silence and isolation that comes from losing the ability to communicate does not discriminate between types of injuries, diseases, accidents, or conditions. Most people who have severe disabilities are expected to fade away quietly and die. For me, that was not okay. With the right equipment and the right technology, these same people can live and be productive for decades. I know I speak for all of us. I know I speak for all who use this technology in saying we cannot revert back to the changes that preceded the Steve Gleason Act of 2015. I am grateful for Senators Cassidy and Klobuchar for their leadership on this issue. End quote. Dr. Cassidy said, quote, This legislation gives a voice to those who cannot speak and empowers those affected by degenerative diseases. The previous administration's decision to limit patient access to these devices was misguided, and I thank my House colleagues for advancing this bipartisan legislation to permanently fix this problem. I look forward to voting for this passage in the Senate. End quote. The ALS Association Network plays a lead role in advocating for increased public and private support of ALS research and public policy initiatives that responds to the needs of people with ALS. Our organization's public policy efforts in Washington, D.C. have raised the profile of ALS at the White House, among members of Congress, and within federal agencies including CMS, the National Institute of Health, the Food and Drug Administration, the Department of Defense, the Department of Veteran Affairs, the Social Security Administration, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. ALS is a horrible and sad disease. But it doesn't have to win. It doesn't have to win. Find out more at the ALS Association's website, alsa.org. That's alsa.org. We will be back with Ingredients to Success here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. In just a moment. This is a wake up call, fast break. 
Utica Pizza Company spells family. Your family. My family. Their family. The recipes that they have shared with each other throughout the years and have now been so gracious to share them with us. I can sit here and talk with you about all the great things that are on the menu. We'd be here forever. So let me say this. Utica Pizza Company is second to none. And now you can bring it home with you and you can dine in in the restaurant. UticaPizzaCompany.com will give you all the information that you need. And let me say, these Utica Greens, they're the best. Utica Pizza Company. Call them and place your order at 315-214-3060. That's 315-214-3060. Families break bread at Utica Pizza Company. For all of us that have always wanted our favorite restaurant to come to us, it's now a reality in Central New York with It's a Utica Thing. With Utica Pizza Company bringing their wonderful recipes that they've handed down through generations to you, to your events, to your business, to your home. It's a Utica Thing. Proudly bringing Utica Pizza Company on wheels to your location. Call 315-738-8946. That's 315 315- 738-8946 to bring Utica Pizza Company to your doorstep with It's a Utica Thing. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. It is time for us to bring you the ingredients to success Proudly brought to you by Utica Pizza Company, and it's a Utica thing. Utica Pizza Company is located on 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York. It is right by the Sweetheart Corners and located inside of the Old Mains Plaza. So make sure that you go and see Utica Pizza Company on 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York by the Sweetheart Corners. They are there on location, and Utica and It's a Utica Thing comes to your location. So Utica Pizza Company is on 628 South Main Street, North Syracuse, New York. It's a Utica Thing is Utica Pizza Company on wheels. They will come to your location, give you an opportunity to connect with them on site, whatever it may be. So you have the opportunity to have... Utica Pizza Company come to you with It's a Utica Thing. They'll come over to your location, to your anniversary, your birthday party, your graduation party, your business event, your convention, whatever you have going on, and you will make the menu and they'll make it happen. Find out more at itsauticathing.com. That's itsauticathing.com. You can also go to numerous Stores all throughout the state of New York, not just Syracuse and Utica and Auburn and whatnot, but all throughout the state of New York, you will find inside of Stewart Shops and Price Choppers, Spiras, as well as Nichols and so on and so forth, the Utica Pizza Company, It's a Utica Thing products, including their tomato pie, as well as their long line of amazing Riggy sauces. They have so many different sauces that are now available to you, including but not limited to. And the thing is that what I love about their sauces is that they are, you know, instead of saying, well, this is rustic marinara and regular marinara and this and the other thing, they made their sauces the different variations of Riggy. So we have the vodka riggy, we have the roasted garlic riggy, the piggy riggy, the veggie riggy, the chicken riggy, which we're very, very excited about all of those. And, of course, the marinade, the marinara sauce that they have, and their tomato pie. And I actually cooked with both yesterday. So we, I got some penne at the store, threw that on the stovetop, let that boil up a little bit. I think it's the per- most perfect pasta I've ever made. Let it boil up, do its thing tossed on the chicken riggy sauce and then added in some of my own chicken that we had kind of like pulled chicken threw that in there and made some chicken riggies and then we heated up a tomato pie in the oven and it was absolutely fabulous i felt like i was eating at utica pizza company and now that i'm talking about it i'm probably going to have to eat my leftovers after the show so i really and it was great it was great i mean you know there's something about the magic of going into utica pizza company and phil mixing it up and doing all that 
But when you're not there and you're at home and the wife comes home and, and you want to relax and whatnot, to have it home with you, now Utica Pizza Company is there for your home-cooked meal, and they're there from your away-from-home home-cooked meal at Utica Pizza Company. So make sure you come and check us out. And uh, and definitely, and I say us because, you know, they're part of my family and, and, and I – consider myself part of theirs as well and i know that they treat me as such so utica pizza company it's a utica thing find out more on utica pizza company.com and it's a utica thing.com as well to find out their amazing products well the ingredients to success if you've never heard it before it's something new and interesting and uh, the ingredients to success i shouldn't say i mean it's something that we've done here on the show for a while for the last couple of years but it's an interesting way on me to bring you my thoughts on a specific issue, and, and coming off of everything with the ALS, with ALS and Dwight Clark and 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 Steve Gleason and all of that, you know, I feel that it it is time for us to to spread a message of cheer, a message of positivity, a message of change. And so, the ingredients to success today are the ingredients to a successful life. We focus so much on the negative. We focus on you know, and I'm and I'm a culprit of this too. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm not. We focus on people who hate us. We focus on people who say bad things about us. We focus on people who lie about us. And that is what we spend our energy on. We spend our energy on things we can't control, right? You can't control what somebody says about you. You can't control what somebody does toward you. You can control how you respond to it. And your response is how you live your life. You know, we focus so much on all the negatives in life. And then there's people that are battling ALS and other diseases around the world and, you know, battling poverty and battling corruption, battling abuse. And we don't focus on that because we're too stuck worrying about stuff we can't control, right? You can't control if somebody says something bad about you. You can't control if somebody wants to do something bad toward you. You could protect yourself. You can protect your heart and protect your mind. We are human. We do hurt. We are not impenetrable. But we can be powerful. And being a powerful person is how you battle the world how you battle the negativity of the world. But the world isn't totally a bad place. We think it is because that's what we focus on, but the world isn't a bad place. The world is filled with great human beings, to name a few. My wife, not just great human beings, but great beings. My dog, Lily. My wife, Kate. My mother, Debbie, my friends, Eric, Tara, Evan, Ross, Brandon, Kirsten, my brothers, Nico and Miguel, Jason, Ross, also a part of that, my nieces, Carly, Gracie, Lorelai, my Aunt Donna, my Aunt Ev, James, Phil, Charlie, Jay, Jimmer, Mark, Joey, Rob, LJ, Tim, Dan, not me, another Dan, Danny, 
Same thing. <laughs> Kira, Domenico, Brad, George, Ralph. There are things to focus on in life that are better than what we spend our time on. Our ingredients to success in our lives is to focus on those who enrich our lives. The ingredients to success for you today is to focus on what is important to you and your health and your livelihood. You can't make, and this is one of the hardest things for me to get through my brain, you cannot make somebody like you. You will not understand why sometimes people don't like you. You cannot spend your time focusing on people who don't enrich your life. Diddy said something over the weekend, and I loved it. And I want to read it to you. And yeah, it's that P. Diddy guy who made those songs that you dance to eh, 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 all the time. So, Diddy said this, and I loved it. If it ain't making me money, making me better, or making me happy, I ain't making time for it. If you didn't get the memo, take that. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. If it ain't making you money, making you better, or making you happy, then why focus on it? We focus so much, so much time, so much energy on things that we have no control over, things that we cannot change, things that we do not understand. And the moral of the story is you're never going to understand them. How someone can wake up in the morning and tell a bunch of people all over the world that they come into contact with that they should hate somebody else is beyond me. And I watched a video last night of the love message of people going around and spreading love. They just go up to random strangers and they say, hey, guy, I love you. And some people say, I love you back. Some people say, don't talk to me. Some people say, don't touch me. And some people ask for a hug. But the beauty of it is a lot of people got involved in this. The I Love You Project. To spread positivity. You know, everybody tells you hate spreads like wildfire. So does love. So does love. Love spreads like wildfire too. Positivity spreads like wildfire too. Goodness. Honesty, truthfulness, they spread like wildfire too. Comedy spreads like wildfire too. You choose, folks. You choose what you're going to do. You choose. They don't choose for you. You choose. And you have every right in this life to choose to be happy. If you were battling ALS, would you finally love your life? If you had cancer, would you finally appreciate the things in your life that matter? Or would you spend your life saying, I have cancer, let me worry about all the people that said something to me about on Twitter? It's perspective. And we lose perspective Almost as soon as we gain perspective. And it's our job to hold on to perspective. Because perspective changes the game. Perspective helps us to live. Perspective. That is something that money cannot buy. The notion that someone's life is always worse than yours, yeah, it can help you to realize things and pay attention to things, but you know what? It makes me sad. You know why? Because I don't want you to think about lives that are worse than yours. I want you to enrich your life. 
I want you to want people to have a better life, and I want you to want yourself to have a better life. The athletes I spoke with today made a decision in their lives to be better. Some people could call them traitors because they left Syracuse. Some people at Temple might not want to accept Rodney because he hasn't been there and he's just coming for a year trying to get to the NFL. They might not care. They might do the same thing to Juwan Dows of Western Michigan. Or they can understand that those gentlemen in their lives made a decision that they felt was best for them. And how dare anybody take away that decision from them? They didn't say a bad word about Syracuse, but it was time to go. They're doing what they want to do to live the best life possible. And how dare anybody stand in the way of that notion? Living your best life. So to Rodney Williams, who's heading to Temple, I love you, brother. And to Juwan Dallas, who's heading to West, Western Michigan, I love you too, brother. And I hope and I pray nothing but the best for you. I hope this upcoming season is better than any season you've ever experienced before. And that doesn't make me anti-Syracuse. That makes me pro my brothers and sisters. Because to like someone only if they come to your school. To like someone only if they play in your sandbox. To like someone only if they listen to you. To like someone only if they follow you. Only if they tweet at you. Only if they like your page. Is a one-sided relationship built on use. You're using. Of course people want players to come to their favorite team. Of course people want the greatest experiences and stores and restaurants to come to their city. But don't... don't underappreciate what's already here. Syracuse has so much to offer the world. So if you stand here and say there's nothing to do in Syracuse, it's not because there's nothing to do in Syracuse. It's because you have decided to not f flow outside of your tiny little circle. Because everywhere in this world, God sprinkles good people. And when those good people decide to branch off like Rodney, like Juwan, into another community to spread goodness. You support and you love those good people. Because if you are a good person, you know that wherever good goes, you go with it. And wherever good is, you're there. And if good moves around, that's okay. Because spreading goodness is how you change the world. We all talk about change as a bad thing. When it's goodness, it's a great thing. And the companies that I work with in Central and Upstate New York, they spread goodness. That's why I work with them. I'm very different on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortor and Dan Tortor Broadcast Media and Super Powered Pop with DT and EB and CNY Pop Festival and our trivia nights and our game show nights. I'm a different breed of human being. I don't just take money from people. I work with quality. It's not about quantity and it's not about how much. It's about quality. The quality and the content of the character of the people that we work with. Because I like to have fun in my life. I don't want to just take a paycheck from somebody. I want to have a relationship with that person. I want to know how they tick, why they tick. Because I'm building a team. Life is so alone when you do it alone. And that sounds redundant, but how many people forget that? You're an advertiser. You're just looking to make $100,000 this year. So what do I got to do to get there? Instead of looking at the quality and the content of who you reach out to. And sometimes that person you reach out to is a little bit. Maybe it's not a lot. I can't give you all this, Danny, but I can give you something. Do you take that something? Or do you just say, no, it's not enough? If I've learned anything in 32 years plus of being on this earth, it's this. If a good person stretches out their hand 
with something good inside of it. Don't ever say that's all you got. Say thank you. And I'll try and come back with twofold for you. Help each other. That's your ingredient to success. Don't wait for ALS, cancer, or any of these things to hit your doorstep to appreciate your life. And give everything you got. And when you make a decision, make it for you. Your peace of mind, your health, and your happiness. I hope that's what Rodney did, and I hope that's what Juwan did. And I hope that they make it to the NFL or wherever they want to go. Because they were willing to try, and now they're willing to try something new. And they haven't given up. And for that, they're already my champions. Thank you to Juwan Dowles, and thank you to Rodney Williams. Coming up on tomorrow's show on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora, live 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time. I know we went a little bit over today, but it's because I felt like sharing something with you and saying it out loud to me, too, because we all need to learn, right? So on Wednesday's show, June 6th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time, I'm going to be joined by Coach Q of Syracuse Women's Basketball. We've been kind of gearing up to do some things here this summer. He was on the show recently, and he's going to be back on the show tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're also going to have another interview come up onto the show that I'm very, very excited about, and that interview is going to feature Darius Robinson, who's a 2019 defensive end who very much likes Syracuse. So we're going to hear from Darius Robinson. We're going to hear from Coach Q and so much more on tomorrow's broadcast of Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. In the meantime, find us on Twitter at CallDT, Facebook at Wake Up Call DT, and on Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. You can also connect to and you should and we thank you and implore you to do this go to cnypopfestival.com click on buy your tickets they are very inexpensive folks we're asking fifteen dollars for you to buy your ticket fifteen dollars to buy your tickets for an adult ten dollars for children and five and under are free if you want vip tickets which you'd be crazy not to get these the vip tickets are only going to cost you 30 bucks to come in a full hour early not a half hour not 15 minutes full hour early you get a swag bag that nobody gets you get one of our inaugural cny pop festival t-shirts which we're only going to make an inaugural t-shirt one time you get to have this first ever t-shirt and and you get to enjoy the event so make sure that you come out and do that cnypopfestival.com buy your tickets it is sports related it is tv related it is movie related it's your fix if you're a comic book fan if you're a sports fan if you're a movie fan if you're a tv fan it brings it all together there's nowhere else that can tell you we have the adams family syracuse basketball syracuse football you know uh, adams family representative star wars representative power rangers representative the flash representative come out and see us we're going to have a phenomenal time it's family friendly and i want to thank all of our wonderful, wonderful clients that are coming out to this thing, including but not limited to the Fourth Wall Collectibles and Comics and Collectibles, Newman Sports Cards, Orange Theory Fitness Syracuse, Awara Vineyards Theory Syracuse, which is housing, as well as Rashad Mustafa, a local CNY artist, Lawrence L.J. Papaleo of Gilbo, Real- Gilbo Realty, licensed real estate salesperson. You hear him on the show every day, and you can call him at 315 315- 482524 PGA Authentic Autographs of Central New York Looking Glass Events and of course my show Super Powered Pop with DT and EB and Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. We also want to put a very special thanks out to our festival partners Honda City of Liverpool, Utica Pizza Company and True by Hilton Camillus. Make sure that if you're coming into town for the show and you need to book a room, our host hotel is True by Hilton Camillus. When you buy your tickets on cnypopfestival.com, you will also see right under the True logo that you can click there and reserve your room for the event, which is Sunday, August 12th, one day only. Buy your tickets now, cnypopfestival.com. I'll speak with you all tomorrow morning. God bless you and be well.